Hello guys and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we're going to be creating the Death Pulse ability used by Necrophos in Dota 2. And what the hell is happening to my skin, man? What is happening? What the fuck? First things first, I will make my scene look prettier by adding a plane with a checker material and changing the light color to a white. Okay, next I'm going to set up a very simple player controller. You can skip this and just use your controller. My controller is quite shitty, it only moves the player and not the camera. Anyways, now let's do our death pulse thingy. Begin by creating an empty game object. Call it Death Pulse and give it a new C-Sharp script called Death Pulse script. Create another empty game object as a child of a Death Pulse game object and call it Visuals. As the name suggests, this will hold our visuals. For simplicity's sake, I will give it a tiny sphere and remove its collider. Create a new particle system and make it a child of the sphere. This will be our glow and trail effect. Lower the duration and lifetime to 2 seconds. Start speed to 0 and under shape settings change it to sphere and radius to the minimum possible so that they spawn right on the center. I'm going to lower its size a bit. Yeah, that looks better. Go down here and enable trails. Check world space and move it around a bit. It looks pink because we have to give it a material. So scroll down to render settings and give it a material. I will use the default line material that comes with Unity. Go back to trail settings and change the color over lifetime to use a curve and make it fade out. For width over trail, enable curve and pick a curve going down. I'm also going to change the star value so that it is a bit smaller. Move it around the scene to preview it. Okay, looks fine to me. Reset its position and disable the visuals game object. We need our impact and spawn effects, so create a new particle system. Change its shape to sphere, radius to the minimum possible, remove its rate over time and enable burst of 30 particles. Change its duration and lifetime to 2 seconds. For start speed, enable random between two values and I'm going for something like 0.3 and 1. Scroll down and enable size over lifetime and pick a curve going down. Okay, that looks good enough. Rename it spawn effects. Duplicate it and this will be our impact effects. It will be pretty much the same, just change the start speed so that they move away faster. Select both of our particles and make them a child of our death pulse game object. Disable the impact effects game object and make sure only the spawn effects is enabled. Alright, let's do some coding now. Open up our death pulse script. Alright, first thing we'll do here is set up our variables. The target we will chase, the amount of pulses we will create, its speed, radius, the impact distance, destroy delay, how fast it will sway, how far it will sway, and a boolean to determine if this is the spawner or a pulse. We also need a variable to store our start position for our sway to work properly, and our visuals game object. In start we will begin by checking if this is the spawner or a pulse. What do I mean by spawner you ask? Well, this script and game object will have two different states, determined by the is first boolean. One will spawn pulses, and the other, well, it will be the pulses. If it doesn't make sense to you, trust me, by the end it will. So if this is a pulse, we will save its start position and also assign our visuals variable so that we can enable it, then we will find our spawn effects and disable it. Cool, if this is not a pulse, then it is the spawner, right? So we create a new function and call it spawn pulses, then add it in here. All done with start. Before we do our spawn pulses function, we will do update. 
and here we'll move our pulses. First, check if we are a pulse by simply checking if we have a target. Make the pulse look at the target and add a forward unit to our start position using our speed variable. Then under here we set the pulse's position using the start position variable and also do our swipe movement. Basically we set which direction we are going then multiply that using mathf.sin. Create a temporary variable to store the distance between our target and the pulse. Now we check if the distance is smaller than our impact distance variable and if it is, then it means we reach our target, so here you access the enemy's health and lower it. I don't have a health script so I can't really do it here, but you will do something like this. Ok, now we find the impact particle game object and enable it. Since we have reached our target, we also need to disable the visuals. Set the target to null so that the pulse stops moving and lastly destroy the pulse using a delay to allow our impact particle to play. All done with update. Scroll down to our spam pulses function and first thing we will do here is get all our potential targets and also create a temporary collider variable. This will allow us to shuffle our array of potential targets. Why shuffle you ask? Well, if you set your limit to be two and have more than two targets in range, it will always pick the same two targets. We don't want that. We wanted to pick a random, so we do a quick shuffle. Cool. Do a for each loop for all of our potential enemies and here I recommend you use your health script to detect whether or not this is a potential enemy. Of course, I don't have a health script, so I'll use a rigid body. Now we check if this variable is not equal to null, which means that it does contain a rigid body and also its tag is not equals to player. We proceed by creating the pulse. You might notice we are using game object here. Basically we are duplicating ourselves, but we need to change some of these pulses variables otherwise it will endlessly create spawners, causing our game to lag like hell or crash even. So if you remember, all we need to do to turn this from a spawner into a pulse is change this variable. So access its script and change it to false. And we also need to assign its target so that the movement we did under update works. Last thing we will do in the script is lower the limit by 1 and check if our limit is smaller or equals to 0 and if it is, we break this loop so that it stops creating pulses. Awesome, all done with the script. Let's take a quick glimpse at my controller. Here all I'm doing is creating the death pulse prefab at the controller's position then destroyed it after 1 second. Why 1 second you ask? I think 1 second is more than enough for the death pulse script to spawn all the pulses and the spawn particles to play. Back in Unity, don't assign the target, we're doing that through code, remember? Make sure you check is first to make it a spawner and not a pulse. For the rest of the values, I'll do something like this. Drag the dead pulse game object into your project window to create a prefab, delete it from the scene and lastly assign the prefab to your controller. Before I hit play, I need some enemies for these pulses to chase, so I'll create a sphere and for my pulses to detect this as a potential enemy, I need to give it a rigid body. And now I will duplicate it a few times, then hit play. It's all working as intended. I'm just going to open up the prefab and change the radius and thickness of the spawn effects a bit. Ok, you might notice that the spawn effects is suddenly disappearing and that's because we are destroying the spawner after one second inside my player controller, remember? So I can change that value or just open my prefab again and change the duration and lifetime to one second. Ok, that looks better. Let's play around with some of the values.
that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. If you want to help me continue creating tutorials, please consider becoming a Patreon. All project files will be available to download there. Scripts, demo scene, prefabs, and the school model. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, you know how it is. I'll see you guys in the next video, bye bye.